Hi, folks. Welcome to Crisco's Corner. Welcome back. And those of you that are new, welcome. This is a piece that was on Fox News Channel's YouTube page. And I think it hits a nail on the head. Those of you that are saying, you know, this civil war can't happen. There's large swaths of the country that the progressive Democrats simply just don't care about. Now, do they wish anybody harm or anything? Well, of course not. When something happens like this chemical spill, this disaster, and as Tucker says, this isn't about climate change, so, but where are all the environmentalists when all these chemicals are spilling in the ocean? But I digress. This is, this is Trump country. This is Republican country. And they could give two dams about any of it. Uh, let's, let's listen to what Tucker has to say here. 5,000 people not far from Pittsburgh. For many years, East Palestine was known as the place that produced dishes and cups and pitchers for America's hotels. The enormous ceramics works there employed much of the town. That's all gone now, and predictably, East Palestine is a lot poorer for it. The median household income in the town is now less than $45,000. East Palestine is overwhelmingly white, and it's politically conservative. More than 70% of the voters in the surrounding county supported Donald Trump in the last election. That shouldn't be relevant, but as you're about to hear, it very much is. Eleven days ago, a 150-car train derailed in East Palestine, and when it did, it spewed poisonous chemicals onto the ground and into the surface waters. Now, where are the environmentalists? Where are they? Wildlife, uh, chickens, uh, foxes, all kinds of wild birds, everything in, in, in wildlife, in the ocean, in the rivers, the streams, are all coming up dying. Where's the outrage? And where's the outrage and where's the caring, at least pretending to care, from our transportation secretary? This was a train wreck in a literal sense. This is the price you pay for making political deals. This is my opinion. Pete Buttigieg has put his transportation secretary so he would drop out of the presidential race when there was a lot of Democrats in the presidential cycle in 2020. It's that simple. I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. This guy, I'll, I'll tell you, to be honest with you, when I say he's a moron, I'm being kind. Because if he's as unfeeling and uncaring about something like this as he comes across, as you're going to see later in this video, then that's a lot worse. At least being a moron means he just can't do the job. This is what happens when you make political deals. After the crash, the Ohio State EPA found evidence of butyl acrylate in the Ohio River, as well as in the creeks and streams that feed it. Now, this was a concern for more than simply East Palestine, given that the Ohio River supplies drinking water to about a tenth of the entire U.S. population. A tenth of the entire U.S. population. Think about that for a minute. I'm seeing a picture of it on your screen right now. So given the evident crisis in East Palestine, how did the federal government, did the Biden administration respond? Well, under Pete Buttigieg, the Department of Transportation, which responds to train derailments, took decisive action. Pete Buttigieg announced something called Transit Equity Day. That's yet another day that we celebrate race-based federal funding that despite the trail train derailment does not apply to East Palestine because the people who live there are the wrong color. So instead, Buttigieg's DOT announced an $80 million project to improve the roads in Philadelphia and $24 million for the roads in Detroit, both of which vote Democrat. Now, there you have it. That's common all over the country for progressive Democrats. They leave large, large areas of conservative people, rural people, just basically just don't care about them because they're after the votes. They're after the votes. It's that pure and simple. This separation of caring for your government for its people, and you pick and choose who the winners and losers are in disasters and difficulties, causes a riff that's irreversible. I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore! Let's listen on. And then Mayor Pete talked about perhaps the most pressing problem in this country, which is that we have too many white construction workers. Mayor Pete said not a single word about East Palestine, Ohio. And that's not because everything was under control there. 
As the DOT was busy tweeting about Black History Month and transit equity, the governor of Ohio announced that that controlled burn of chemicals from the derailment could potentially kill thousands. Now look at the casual attitude of the governor of Ohio and our transportation secretary. Not a peep for over a week as this thing was fire was raging and spreading God knows what, God knows where. I'm not a chemist. Some of these chemicals I couldn't even pronounce. People are showing up, uh, turning up sick. Animals are dying. And here's the other thing. A lot of these chemicals are serious carcinogens. So we're going to have a Chernobyl type situation. But in the United States, where are, where, where are all the federal authorities? Where's the EPA? Where's all of them when they bring in all these trucks and supplies and food and water and, and tents and all just to accommodate these people? Remember, this is February in the north. It's cold. Where are they? Where are the thousands of, of makeshift beds? Oh, wait a minute. They're legal citizens in the United States. They're not unlawful immigrants. Oh, they only care about those people. These people will never vote for a Democrat, the vast majority, especially a progressive Democrat. And it's a two-tier system of caring about your government. And the Ohio governor, it's like a joke. Same with Pete, Pete Buttigieg. He joked about it. Not about the train wreck specifically, but the casual attitude in a time of crisis. Because like this Ohio governor knows, this county will never vote for him. So why should he care? I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore! And that shouldn't surprise you because vinyl chloride, when burned, turns into phosgene. That was the single most deadly poison gas used during World War I. And vinyl chloride was one of the chemicals on that derailed train in East Palestine. Here's the governor of Ohio. Norfolk Southern Railroad is planning a controlled release of the vinyl chloride at approximately 3.30 p.m. The controlled release of the toxic chemicals also has the potential to be deadly if inhaled. Those in the red area, those in the red area are facing grave danger of death if they are still in that area. Those living in the orange area are at risk of severe injury, severe injury including skin burns and serious lung damage. To state the obvious, all of you need to leave as well, uh, and, and, and I need to leave as well too. So, What kind of a a-hole is this guy? It's not a joke. And then later I've, I've read in stories that the EPA stopped testing for chemicals in the air on several of the chemicals that were spilled. They should be all over this. The EPA should be everywhere. The, the might and the force and the money of the federal government should be everywhere. Where are they? Here's what they get. You don't even get a mention from the transportation secretary on a train wreck. It's, it's just disgusting on a level that I, I've never really seen before. I mean, they screamed and howled about lead and water in major cities. I think it was Detroit. And they're still screaming about it. But this is one of the few times that the EPA has a function, a real function. And they're basically treating this like it was nothing. Oh, oh, oh. Notice the tone and the chuckle at the end. That's Governor Mike DeWine of Ohio, a great defender of Ukraine. And he's just announced that, well, thousands of people in his state could die. But he doesn't seem panicked by it. It's not a hair on fire emergency. It's not like Kiev is in peril. So after that controlled burn of the deadly chemicals, officials told residents within East Palestine that if you live within a two mile radius of the derailment, you had to shelter in place and keep your windows closed. Residents closer to the mushroom cloud were put up in a hotel. Within days, they were all let back into their home without the Department of Transportation in Washington saying a word. As one, Yeah, without the Transportation Department saying a word. This is serious stuff. You know, they didn't make the train derail. 
they didn't cause the chemical spill. We could go into the details as to why and the regulations on emergency breaks, and we could really get in the weeds, but that's not the point. The point is the casual attitude of those in charge whose job, in a large part, is to protect its citizens. The EPA is supposedly supposed to protect its citizens, but yet they stopped testing for chemicals in the air. They treated this like it was basically nothing, one-tenth of the water supply of the United States. Think about that for a minute. Hazardous material specialists put it, the whole town may be unsafe as a result of this. Imagine at the same time this has happened in Washington, D.C. in, say, Georgetown. <laughs> well, the National Guard would be called in. There would be no mushroom cloud of toxic chemicals on the horizon. We can promise you that. And, of course, in both cases, if this affected the rich or the favored poor, it would be the lead of every news channel in the world. But it happened to the poor benighted town of East Palestine, Ohio whose people are forgotten and, in the view of the people who lead this country, forgettable. So no big deal. The hazmat specialist in that video, Sil Cagliano, explained to local media that it's not just vinyl chloride on the train. That's not the only threat. There's also ethylene gas. And we're quoting. You're looking at 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the line until you see potential long-term. Exactly right. And then what's going to happen is 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the road, as people start getting sick and rare cancers are everywhere, all the politicians are going to line up and they're going to say, it's just politics. You're going after Democrats because 20 years ago, somebody screwed up and they really didn't screw up. And you're just calling this out because it's election year. And they all sound like the adults in Charlie Brown. Wah, 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 wah. Meanwhile, communities like this are being devastated. Communities like this, who the Rust Belt, as they call it, in Ohio, Indiana, uh, Michigan, uh, Southern Illinois, have all been devastated because of the crappy policies of politicians on both sides of the aisle that just took huge industries, steel industries, manufacturing, and wiped it off the face of the earth, at least in the U.S., including this community, as Tucker said, was really, really big in making... Uh, dishes and pitchers for hotels all over the country and the world. Now gone, of course. These places have been gutted just like a chemical spill. But an economic chemical spill, now they have a real one. And nobody gives a good damn. Pay attention to the animals, always. There's a reason the phrase canary in the coal mine is a cliché. So after all of this becomes public, that the water and the air in and around East Palestine, maybe in the region, could be contaminated, finally, finally, Pete Buttigieg, the Department of Transportation. Yep, here comes Pete Buttigieg, Pete to the rescue. Yeah, okay. Not a peep out of him. Not a peep out of the Biden administration and especially the Transportation Secretary, who's only there because he dropped out of a presidential race to make it easier for Biden to win. Things always have a way of coming back to bite you in the behind. And decided to weigh in, quote, our federal partners at EPA are on site and monitoring indoor and outdoor air quality. Oh, air quality. What about water? <laughs> oh, water. What does that have to do with the climate change? Well, it's the one thing you can't do without. After about two and a half days, you die. But they're not even checking the water. They're only checking the air a week after people were let back into their homes. And according to Mayor Pete, the EPA hasn't even screened 200 homes in close proximity to the burn, the burn that wasn't organic or accidental. It, it was authorities burning it. Now, here's the thing. Why would they screen these 200 houses? This is just my opinion. They don't want a paper trail. They don't want evidence. They want everything just to be not done. That way when these, I mean, every lawyer within a, thousand mile radius of this place filled up their cars got on a train got on a plane whatever they could for transportation and made their way to this town this thing is going to be tied up in the courts for decades i'm 66 they'll still be fighting this long after i'm gone it's ridiculous they don't want a paper trail they want it just to go away it's as simple as that and the people in that community do they want them to die? Of course not. 
but it's not part of their political agenda. This isn't about climate change. And believe me, if this happened, any, any major city, it would be huge. Every resource and department in the federal government would be there to help these people if it happened in a major city. And there's where your separation is coming, and there's where your civil war is coming. So they just don't care, actually. Could that be clearer? While residents in East Palestine were inhaling toxic fumes, Mayor Pete was joking ho, 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 about the Chinese spy balloon his boss allowed to fly across the country. He's a funny guy. Watch this. I mean, if you look at what the American transportation systems have faced in the last two or three years, partly because of the pandemic, we've faced issues from container shipping to airline cancellations. Mm -hmm. Now we got balloons. That's right. Um, <laughs> So you're completely incompetent, completely incompetent. There's never been a cabinet secretary this flamboyantly incompetent and this so obviously uncaring, almost to the point of evil, if we're being honest about it. And That's what I said before, is because he's just incompetent or he's just a sociopath with no empathy for anybody or anything but his agenda in himself. One thing I have to say, I mean... Not every conservative person is perfect. Not every Republican is perfect. Far from it. But one particular characteristic of the far left progressive Democrats is their narcissism. That's very common. Ask any psychologist. Let's listen on. And then the little joke at the end. Ho, 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 ho. That was Mayor Pete yesterday, nearly two weeks after the disaster in Ohio. To a report in Jalopnik, the train involved in the derailment, Norf Norfolk Southern, lobbied federal regulators for about a decade so they wouldn't have to improve their emergency brakes. The Biden administration, like the previous two administrations, didn't push the issue, and apparently the emergency brakes on this particular train failed during this incident. Now, again, there's a lot of propaganda here. There's unions involved. There are a lot of people who benefit from assigning blame to this disaster. So, And so there we are. There we are. They'll say, well, John, mistakes were made and we just weren't prepared properly. And blah, 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 blah. Well, the fact of the matter is they didn't bring the entire power and authority and money of the federal government to help this area. That place should have been evacuated out. I mean, if you got to put up 10 cities and put up 10 cities, do what you have to do. Bus these people into other towns to stay in hotels at the government's expense until they could figure this out and what to do, what the next step would be. But they didn't, they did nothing. Why? Because there's large areas of the country, frankly, that the current administration just simply doesn't care about. Now, do they want these people to die? No, but they want this issue to go away because it's not part of their agenda. And it's really that simple. And this is what separates communities from other communities. And it tags onto itself and multiplies and multiplies and multiplies. People talk about a civil war, a culture war. This is what's going on right now. And what does Pete Buttigieg talk about? How many, there's too many white guys on construction sites. That's what he's talking about is these chemicals are going everywhere and going in 10% of the water supply in the United States. These people are inept. They'll just say, well, John, you're a Trump supporter. Of course you would say that. Even if I hated Donald Trump's guts, these people would still be inept. It's a crappy comparison. They have to go. They have to go. But the bureaucrats are so deep in the deep state, and the EPA is one of those departments. We can go through the rest. HHS, uh, FBI, the EPA, the list is endless. And the bureaucrats are there, and this is what they're doing to people that they don't care about or have no interest in helping. We'll go through the motions, but don't bother us. And that's the way it is. Until next time, goodbye and good luck.